Hey, how are you? This is Aaron McKay back with another installment of Bert Be Gone's Ask an Expert. Today I'm joined by Jeff Watts and Chris Fields. And as you guys know just as well as me, we get a regular phone call about birds on signs. Uh, this is a this is a phone call. Sure, Jeff and Chris, you guys get almost every single day, if not every day. I know it's a call I've received uh, repeatedly. Um, so maybe to kick us off, why do birds like signs? Well, uh, Chris, I'm not sure if you want to jump in. I'll I'll take this one. I mean, it, it's yeah, like you said, it's it's one of our most common yeah. phone calls. Uh, as far as why they like signs, it's. It's pretty much, you know, it's a perfect, it's a perfect spot. I mean, pigeons specifically are, are cliff dwellers, right? Yeah. So that's in their DNA. They love that, that sheer vertical face, the little cubbies that the sign gives them provide shelter. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a perfect height, uh, to, to take a look. And obviously those signs are usually around outdoor dining areas, retail stores where they have, you know, a lot of dumpsters and, and other food, uh, a great food source for them. So yeah. And how do uh, birds' uh, presence on a sign impact maybe businesses? Because oftentimes, you know, I know me as a, as a patron, if I am looking at a restaurant to go in and eat, uh, I'm going to see some of that stuff. So maybe, maybe Chris, how, how have you seen customers negatively impacted uh, at, in, as you've had conversations over the years uh, with birds specifically nesting on signs? Yeah, well, as you mentioned, uh, you know, outdoor dining, obviously uh, customers don't want to see uh, you know, bird droppings around where they're eating. But just besides that, any sort of signage on any building, when a customer is entering that business, you're, you don't want their first impression to be bird droppings on the sidewalk. You know, that, that, that doesn't give a great impression for the customer. And that kind of, you know, lessens the confidence level as they're walking in there. So, you know, really it's an aesthetic issue. And also, uh, obviously, bird droppings are acidic and can cause damage to that sign over time. So, you know, it's uh, it, it's mostly aesthetics and, and, and damage to the signs that, you know, white people would, would want to take care of that problem. Yeah, and I know if I'm about to drop $60 for uh, a meal feeding all my kids, uh, if I see bird droppings everywhere, uh, I'm probably going to go uh, somewhere else. Uh, it won't give you no. confidence in the uh, cleanliness of the kitchen, that's for sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I mean, what if, what if uh, you know, it is a food preparation place, right? Yeah. You know, if you're walking in, if the front of it is all soiled, um, where, what about the loading dock in the back? Are yeah. the birds getting inside or, you know, uh, affecting the food that's coming out as well? So, yeah, that, that, it's just your first impression, like Chris said. Um, if it's if it's a dirty, soiled area, yeah. what's my food going to be like? Yep, yep. And when you're having those conversations uh, with customers, what's one of the first questions or maybe series of questions you guys ask uh, when you're trying to assess the type of problem they're facing? Well, you know, first off is, yeah, what species of bird are we dealing with? And then also are the, are the birds nesting? Mm -hmm. You know, if it, what type of sign is it? You know, if, it, if it's a flush mounted sign versus a, a really wide open sign or odd shaped sign, not your typical block letters and yeah. things of that nature. Can, so you, can so they you, nest in there? Yeah, so you mentioned a few things. They're pretty rapid fire. So uh, the type of bird, what the bird's doing, uh, and the type of sign. Uh, so maybe kind of walk us through in more detail uh, the type of bird and uh, the behavior of the bird, why those would uh, impact maybe the choices you make uh, regarding the type of products you use. Well, first off, you know, what the bird is doing is is – is key because that if it's nesting, you know, there's only so much you can do, right? Exclusion yeah. or some sort of a, a trapping program mm -hmm. uh, type of deal. Uh, but if but if it's just perching on top of the sign, yeah, the bird size does matter. Obviously, the small birds are, are very nimble, can get around a lot of the products. Uh, you're going to be limited to uh, certain products with the smaller birds versus pigeons and, and, and larger birds. Uh, so that that's why the, the bird species is important. Yeah. And right. then you mentioned, and, and you mentioned that's what oh, the, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. The, and that's the, why the type of sign is important as well. You know, whether it's flush mounted to the wall or, or sticking off the wall and how much opportunity it's giving that bird to nest behind the sign. And really the, the size of the bird as well, sparrow, pigeon, if you're going with a nesting, you know, type of solution like bird netting, it's, uh, you know, that's going to determine what size uh, mesh you use for your netting as well. Yep. yep. 
So let's maybe maybe walk up uh, the spectrum of uh, bird behavior. So it's a light to medium pressure versus heavy pressure, what we call a nesting situation. Uh, so what products, let's say we're dealing one with a flush mount uh, uh, sign. So the, the sign structure uh, and assembly is directly against the, the side of the structure. And the birds are just kind of hanging out and perching. Uh, they're not actively nesting yet. Uh, what type of product kind of would you move uh, your customer towards or the, the pest control operator, wildlife operator we're, we're working with? Well, that, that would uh, be determined by the bird. Uh, but if we're dealing with uh, pigeons, you know, and it's a flush mount sign and they're just hanging out on top, uh, you know, something like the bird spikes, uh, plastic or stainless steel would be great. Uh, we've got, you know, if somebody, you know, they don't want to see the bird spikes. We've got our Spectrum V, a holographic bird gel that works great. That comes in the pucks. Uh, nobody's going to see that from the ground. Uh, and that's something you can place, you know, about every six to eight inches or so. And, uh, you know, that'll work great. You know, we've also got our bird gel flat track, yeah. uh, which will work one. for all birds, uh, sparrows, pigeons, starlings, anywhere in between. And, and the, the Spectrum V will also. Um, but you know, those are the types of things you can use on a flush mount sign. I haven't even seen the bird wire up there as, as well, right? Yeah. 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 That's good. It's a small, s smaller signs, you know, it might be too cost prohibitive to use the, the, the bird jolt, which I love, yeah. you know, because it does work on all, all species of birds and you don't see it up there. Um, but you know, for, if you have a 10 foot sign, yep. you know, you might not need that, that expensive of a, of a situation on there where you can just put a few, uh, posts and wires up there. So yeah. Uh, that, that's where the Spectrum V comes in great, though, on those smaller signs like that. Yeah. Yeah, we even mentioned earlier, kind of in the lead up to our conversation uh, right now, uh, talking about maybe in a smaller format sign, um, you do it, use one of our newer products called Avian Block, oh, yeah. uh, which passively diffuses methylanthranolate and kind of dis discourages birds from being uh, in the area. Um, now let's move up the spectrum of bird pressure more towards the kind of the, the heavier bird pressure scenarios. Maybe there's active nesting or there has been active nesting in the past. Uh, Jeff, what, what would you kind of, how would you transition that conversation once you learn that information? Well, you see, you, we've all seen the birds nesting in spikes before in, in the science, right? It, it is a common occurrence and yep. I guarantee you the birds were probably already nesting up there. And, and the owners or the uh, installers came and just tried to clean up as best they could and shove some spikes in the O right. and the A and stuff like that and try to try to get away with it. Well, those birds are going to come right back and use that spike as nesting, you know, to hold their nesting material up there. So yep. um, that's usually why the spikes <laughs> fail is because they were already nesting in that area. But any sign that creates a, a cubby like that that provides shelter, we need to seal it off. All right. So whether it's our netting or wire mesh around some of the signs that might be off the wall a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, something like that, we, we need to, because they will fight to get in between the spikes, the wires, yeah. even the, on the gels as well. So mm -hmm. uh, we, need, we need to exclude. Yep, yeah. And what's one of the phrases we use often uh, around here, maybe even particularly when we're training our authorized installers is nesting equals netting. That's a, that's a phrase I learned from our, our good friend, uh, Mike Doherty. <laughs> yeah. And uh, whenever we have people call in on, on the phone and we're able to clearly diagnose that it has been a systemic issue, the birds have been there for a long time, nesting, uh, just nesting equals netting. It's a really, really helpful uh, memory uh, device. Um, now, you, you mentioned some of those kind of niche areas. Let's say, let's say it's a combination of we have birds nest, uh, sorry, perching or hanging out on the top of the sign, but they haven't historically nested. Uh, do you potentially run a risk if you take away the top of that sign uh, with spikes or gel or an alternative product, specifically if you're dealing with smaller birds like sparrows, of them going into some of the crevices uh, in the actual sign itself? Uh, so how, how would we, if you're using a product like bird jolt or spike, uh, how would we prevent a smaller bird species like a sparrow from migrating or moving into some of those voids in the sign? Well, I mean, you you could move stuff. You could move, like if you say it's a small bird and uh, you're using the bird jolt flat track, you can jump some wire down to the smaller crevices. I, I assume you're talking about like, you know, the if there's an O or an A or some sort of circle where they can uh, move down into. Exactly. Uh, if they haven't already, you know, established nesting in those spots and they're just 
they've, they've just been hanging out and using it as a perching spot, the, you know, then something like the, you know, running a little strip of bird jolt down there or some spectrum bee pucks down there, uh, you know, w would probably be a good uh, preventive measure for keeping the birds from nesting there since they haven't established the nest already. Uh, but, you know, if that's not the case, if you just need to cover up small areas like that, like Jeff was saying before with the wire mesh or something of that nature, uh, you could block those areas off like that. Yeah, I, I, I really like to see those screened off if possible. Yeah. I mean, yeah, what Chris mentioned uh, will work, but I've also seen some smaller birds determined to get into those spots. So right. even right. if it's our black solar mesh that you can cut up and, and seal up those holes um, yeah. or paint it yourself if it's a special color sign, um, that, that seems to work the best. We, we want to exclude. If, if we can't trap and, mm -hmm. and you know, remove some of those existing birds, then, then we, should, we should seal it off permanently. Yeah, so when, when you've, because uh, oftentimes we get phone calls when someone has stepped into a situation to try to solve a bird problem, and they've already made an attempt. Uh, and maybe it's gone, gone poorly or hasn't met their expectations or the customer's expectations. Uh, where do uh, pest control operators, uh, building maintenance personnel, or wildlife control operators, where do they go wrong, uh, typically, if they're trying to address uh, birds hanging out on, on a sign? Well, I would think where they would typically go wrong is just using the incorrect product for the situation. Uh, you know, people think that, you know, something like spikes uh, is the end all be all for everything. And, and they'll use it in a spot where the birds are nesting behind the signs. They could go wrong there because it's an easy product to install. Uh, or, you know, they, they go cheap and they get one of the fake owls from the hardware store or something like that and, and think that's going to solve their problem on a, on a sign. And, you know, the, whenever we see a fake owl anywhere, it's a, it's a sales lead for us because they very rarely work. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and, and Jeff, how about you? Where do you guys see, see you guys typically going going wrong? Uh, like like Chris mentioned, it, it's it's taking the cheap, easy route, you know, that, uh, you know, they don't want to uh, spend the money to do it right, or it's just a small area, so they don't think they need to invest that much on a, on a proper job. Um, but yeah, it's it's really easy to go buy a fake owl and, and stick it up on the roof or a, a flasher or you know something or the sound systems. Um, those work great on repelling new birds from finding that area attractive. But if that they've already had a bird issue, it's it's too late for those for those items, and you, and you do need to take away that spot from them. Yep. And then if someone is stepping into uh, their first job and trying to address a bird problem on a sign, uh, what are, obviously we've talked about, hey, identify the bird species, uh, identify the type of sign, and identify the type of bird behavior. Um, but let's say, what are some uh, other common mistakes, particularly when it comes to netting? Let's say it's a nesting situation. Uh, where do people go wrong when they're installing uh, netting on signs? Well, a lot of times it's uh, the building material that you that you're coming up against. Um, you know, whether you're going to a lot of these signs are put up on stucco where you don't have a really something really solid to, to put the hardware on, mm. um, and you're either blowing holes in the siding or you're or you're ripping the, the net out when you when you are installing it too tight. Yep. Um, so that poses some other issues if you can't hang the net tight enough, then it becomes more visible and and, and things of that nature. Um, what else? We have issues with uh, guys do a great job of sealing off that sign, but they didn't angle the net up at the top. There you go. That's and a big the bird, one. The birds sit right on top of the sign, right? Yep. And now they're yep. now they're making a mess, you know, all over your new new netted sign. Uh, feathers get in there. Um, for the first time, in my 17 years, I finally saw a pigeon eat through the net. Mm. And it's because they were desperate to get back into those letters. Mm -hmm. um, and they were able to sit on there and yeah, just they're pick through. Flat. They're yeah. picking through. They're trying to get through. They're trying to feed their babies up through through the net. Sometimes even. Yep. Uh, so we need to we need to really pitch that that net up at a forty five degree angle at least, um, yep. to get to move those birds. Yeah, and as as we go through this conversation, I'll throw up some images of what a good net install looks like. Uh, so those who are following along in the podcast can actually see some visual representations. And Chris, you were going to mention something. Oh, no, I was just going to say, uh, I was going to agree with Jeff. Uh, if he wasn't going to mention it, I was going to say go at least, uh, you know, a couple feet above the sign at a 45 degree angle. And, and just yeah. make sure when you're ordering for a sign, you always want to, you know, order 
over for the netting. I mean, you know, your, your dimensions need to be over. You've, you've got to go, you know, at least a couple feet. Obviously you want to know the depth of the sign. Uh, you want to go at least a couple feet over on the length and width of the sign to make sure you've got enough to angle it up at the top and get behind the sign as well when you're getting back to the building. Yep. And so, so what about uh, having conversations uh, with customers where um, they kind of, they run past the type of sign technology and maybe uh, specifically the type of lights uh, because incandescent lights versus neon versus LED, uh, each one of those light types has a different service life or, or a life cycle of those bulbs, uh, which means they may have to be replaced or those signs would have to be maintained. So uh, that would always be a conversation we'd encourage installers to, to ask, say, what type of light technology is it? So if it is yes. an incandescent light, uh, light technology that needs to be replaced more frequently, uh, that you have some sort of regular access. Maybe it's a zipper, uh, maybe it's net clips, just really based on the type of, of sign and the depth of the sign. But I, we, we have seen uh, individuals kind of, uh, they have to go down and, and cut a net off or, or uninstall it so that the sign can be maintained and then they have to go back and uh, reinstall it because they didn't uh, take the time to ask the question and they were on the hook for that additional uh, labor. So make sure you ask that that question. Yeah, as no, well. that, that's that's yeah. huge because zippers are are kind of an eyesore at that at that height for most most signs, um, and it, it just creates more sag or more weight to the net. Yeah. Um, so yes, knowing knowing how often they need to get in there is, is a key question to ask because yeah. if it's if they don't need to get in there for a couple of years, don't put a zipper in right now. Just yep. you can put in a zipper later. You can put access kit whips in later, or you know, I, I just want. I, I don't want an outside electrician cutting the net either. Yeah, there right? you go. Because they, yep. they never cut in a straight line and they never do a good job of sealing it back up properly. So right. if you're offering a warranty on your install, you know, I I don't want anybody outside cutting our net, yep. right? And then I can't warranty anything like that. So yeah. uh, give me a call. I'll come out, open it up, and seal it off properly, whether it's black hog rings that we have, yeah. black zip ties, or even thread, you know, seal it back up properly and, and look nice. So yeah. Yeah, and that brings kind of, up too uh, oh. with the maintenance. Um, it's it's important to build a maintenance contract and do it as well. Uh, yeah. If you have to come back, you know, maybe maybe twice a year or something, take a look. If it's netting, you know, you could take a look to see if anything's happened with the, uh, you know, with, if anybody's cut it or it's coming loose anywhere. But especially if you're installing something like the Virgil flat track or something of that nature, the Spectrum V pucks, you want to make sure that those are still effective. The, uh, the connectors on the track are, are, are still connected properly. Uh, so you always want to, you know, try to build a maintenance contract in there to make sure that your system is working for a long, long term. Yep, that's huge. And it's an opportunity to uh, make some additional revenue with that service contract. And the more frequently you're out there, you're actually having more interaction and connection with the customer because uh, you can call them or shoot them an email with an update. Hey, this is what I saw. Uh, this is what I did. And they get more familiar with interacting with you, build a greater relationship of trust, and maybe your, the services you provide to that customer can expand uh, over time. Um, so birds and signs, Jeff, Chris, are there any other things you, you want to, any uh, nuggets of wisdom you want to drop prior to closing this one up? No, I, I think we hit it all. Really, I mean, it, it's the most common problem out there, I think, uh, as far as the phone calls I receive. And... You got to do it right. You you can't just piecemeal it up there and and uh, and and hope they move away, right? If they they've been living up there, they're going to fight to get back in there. Yep, that's right. All right, and if you come across something that uh, you know we haven't covered here in the last twenty minutes or so, give us a call. We're we're always available six a.m. to five p.m. Monday through Friday, East. You know, it's uh, Pacific Standard Time. Sorry, or daylight, whatever. <laughs> But um, yeah, give, give us a call and we can help you if uh, we haven't covered what uh, what you're looking at. Yep. Yeah. And it, again, if this is your first time uh, trying to deal with a bird situation on a sign, uh, call Jeff. He, he loves <laughs> he loves having those conversations. Anytime. And you can call. Oh, Chris thanks a lot, call. Aaron. I appreciate it. Don't call me. No. <laughs> and you can call me <laughs> as well. Uh, but Jeff, Chris, as, as always, really appreciate the wisdom uh, and the laughs. Uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Right on. Awesome. Thanks, Aaron. Yep.